Hello everyone, I'm Aureli Brahmadesam, CTO and Head of Engineering at Razorpay, the largest and fastest growing payment gateway in India. Thank you for the opportunity to get into the details of our stack. Let me give a brief overview of my journey so far. I've been a data guy for two decades. I spent the first decade of my career at Microsoft. I built various storage systems and data systems and ML platforms. Next, I spent time at Amazon, primarily working on Amazon Aurora database, which I eventually led. From 2022, I am working at Razorpay as the head of engineering and CTO. There are several products that we build, and the primary ones are Payment Gateway. This is our leading product. And we have a new banking offering called as Razorpay X that allows businesses to manage their current accounts and so forth. We have a offline payment systems called as Razorpay POS. We, we have devices that our merchants use for collecting payments. And we have a rewards and engagement platform, which we use to provide offers in checkout experience. Let me explain the Razorpay's mission. Our mission is to become the one-stop money movement platform for businesses. To begin, let me explain a little bit more on what we mean by money movement. In this example, there is a store, which could be an offline store or an online store. The customer purchases goods and services from the store. The store themselves do not build the product. They use a manufacturer to make the product. They use vendors to get services of software, hardware, and other services. They also have employees that serve the needs for the customer. In this case, the customer pays the merchant. The merchant then places order with the manufacturer, gets the goods, places order with vendor for various services, gives the appropriate amount of money for, the, for their services. They also pay their employees. Let's look at how this money movement for a business works with Razorpay in the picture. For an offline store, we give a POS device that the customer can use to place the order. For an online store, typically businesses have a website or an app that they can give to the customer to place the order. When the customer places an order in an online setting, when they go through the checkout process, Razorpay code starts running and presents the customer with various payment methods like credit card, debit card, pay through bank, cash on delivery and so forth. And once the customer pays the business, Razorpay collects the money on behalf of the business from the customer and deposits the money through settlement service on the current account that the business has with a bank. Essentially, Razorpay can allow the business to manage their current account more efficiently. When the business places an order with a manufacturer, they have to send money to the manufacturer and they can use Razorpay payout service. Similarly, when a vendor sends an invoice, Razorpay can manage the invoice and pay the vendor at appropriate time using vendor payment service. The business can also schedule payments for recurring payments. In case of employees, we have a payroll service that the business can use to pay the employee. For day-to-day -day cash management, the business can use Razorpay's corporate credit card. So imagine you are a startup founder. Instead of giving money to your employee to spend for meals and so forth, you can ask Razorpay to give credit card, corporate credit card for your employees. So when the employees spend their money, that can be managed easier. And we also found that a lot of startups spend a lot of time in managing payrolls where when an employee asks for a cash advance, the owner, the founder has to spend quite a bit of time tracking that money and collecting it back or adjusting in the salary. Razorpay solves all of that problem with payroll. Now and then, the business also would like cash advance. For example, because these stores, these businesses operate by delivering goods and collecting money later, they might run out of cash at the end of the month to pay their employees, in which case they can ask Razorpay for loans, and we have such service. 
As you can see, Razorpay helps in money movement for all aspects of a business need. Let's look at Razorpay's growth story. We started in 2014 when we onboarded the first business. Over time, we have added lots of businesses. And as you can see in the diagram, we have now more than 5 million businesses. We also process a lot of money through our system. For example, in 2017, we processed a billion dollars through our platform and we call it total payment volume. Every two to two and a half years, we are doing 10x that growth. For example, in 2019, we processed $10 billion worth of TPV. Now we are processing $150 billion worth of TPV. So we have a very highly scalable payment service. Let's look at a graph which shows the transactions that are processed on the Razorpay platform in a typical week. This graph is showing that there is peaks and valleys and spikes of the transactions that are being processed at the Razorpay payment gateway service. As you can see, the transaction volume never goes to zero. That means that our platform has to be very highly available because commerce never sleeps and our platform never sleeps. Let's go through how we keep our systems up. We have achieved a high availability of 99.99% availability. When you design a service, you have to keep in mind the availability of all the dependencies that you use. If your dependency is of lower availability, then your service will have similar availability. So we spent the last two years in improving our availability by first choosing the right database architecture. We chose Aurora database service with multi-AZ deployment availability, which gives four nines of availability, which is 99.9% .9 availability. So all our critical data needs are going through Aurora databases. We also found that the surge in connections that might happen are not handled well with the databases. So we implemented proxy servers on top of these databases so that the connection surges are handled in a more graceful manner. We also looked at our existing monolith service that was built in 2014. At that time, we had used PHP as a technology and we had built a monolith. Over time, we have realized that this doesn't scale because the code has to be modified without regressions. We chose Golang as our technology and we have enabled many microservices to be built. So our monolith has been replaced with microservices. Each service team now has destiny in their hands. Now they can deploy smaller services at their own pace. And because there are so many microservices, the single point of failure has been eliminated. So we are having high availability. Let's look at once you have high availability, how we protect from attacks. In terms of security, because you are a payment system, we get a lot of attacks. For example, the last year, we successfully mitigated 542 distributed denial of service attacks. How do we do that? This amounts to more than one attack per day. We have written a very detailed blog for which I have given a link in the slide. We started with creating granular rate limiters in our load balancing layer and our firewall layer. We looked at applying limits at a merchant level. Second, we looked at what are the APIs they are calling. So we are able to have a very granular API level limits. We also found that we need to put limits at identifiers such as IP addresses so that we can quickly block the IP addresses that are attacking our service. We also found that Many times merchants would be actually doing a sale event, which if we are not recognizing properly, we might be preventing our merchants from using our platform's capability. So we built very granular AI models that builds time series at a merchant level. With this AI model capability, we are able to identify whether a merchant is having a sale event or not. For example, in India, the cricket matches that happen through IPL is a very unique event where just half an hour before the cricket match, we get 10x the load from all these gaming sites. We quickly identify that this is an expected pattern and we allow such traffic through. With both 
the rate limiters at the load balancer and firewall and the AA models, we are able to handle such diverse patterns that happens for merchants in our system. We didn't stop there. We took these signals and put them in our API layer also, so that the API layer can also throttle such surgeon connections, surgeon APIs. So we have defense in depth. So we are not just protecting attacks at the surface layer, but also protecting at the API layer. Now that we have highly available system, now we have to protect against transactional risks also. Here, I'm going to talk about phishing, identity theft. These are the top ones that are quite obvious. I'm going to spend a little bit more time explaining what is a chargeback. When a customer places an order with a merchant, and if they are not asking for a refund from the merchant, but asking the payment system for money back, it's called as a chargeback. We see a lot of that. We also see that fraudsters somehow steal credit cards and test that credit card with our system. If it is successful, then they would come back to do a lot more frauds. These four types of frauds are very prevalent in our system. How do we protect our system and our customers with these frauds? We started with building a very scalable rule engine that looks at each transaction against 400 rules that we have crafted over time. These include velocity checks. For example, what is the frequency of such transaction with a particular payment method? We can identify that. We also understand the typical pattern of transaction at a merchant level. So if we are seeing a lot more transactions, we can potentially flag it as fraudulent transactions. To do all of these things, we had to build risk scoring AI models that takes in 500 different parameters. These are derived parameters. So with the rule engine that looks at 400 rules and AI models that look at 500 plus derived parameters, we're able to with high confidence determine if we should allow a transaction or not. But this is not enough. We had to also give control to our operators for human intervention. So we have built a very good maker checker tool that our risk specialists would use to determine if to allow or disallow a transaction. With all of these three capabilities, we are able to manage high transaction volume with low risks. I talked about transaction risks, but there are also business risks. How do we protect our businesses that use our platform from these risks? Let me give you an example of a risk. In India, 30% of e-commerce orders suffers from what we call return to origin problem. What is RTO? When a customer places an order, the e-commerce site would send the package from its warehouse to the customer. The customer might just refuse to accept it and send it back to the warehouse. Essentially, 30% of e-commerce orders are being returned back to the origin. Imagine that you are a small business owner running an e-commerce site where you are seeing 30% of your order coming back to your warehouse. You have lost a lot of opportunity and you are spending a lot of money on shipments back and forth from the warehouse. At Razorpay, we have technology to reduce this RTO by 50 to 70%. How do we do that? We first provide configurable payment methods to the merchants. Merchants, when they see the checkout journey of a customer, can provide different payment methods. For example, RTO is very high if you give cash on delivery or payment of payment on delivery option. Instead of that, the merchant can choose to provide credit card or debit card as payment options. And it can at least collect part of the payment so that they can reduce the chance that a customer is going to return it back. But the merchant does not have the insight whether a particular customer is going to return it back. In which case, Razorpay has granular AI model that is built at a merchant level. At a payment gateway level, we see a single customer placing orders across merchants. So we know more about a customer than the merchants themselves because the merchant sees the transaction only within their site. So using our AI models, we can predict whether a customer has high propensity of returning the package back. And we inform the merchants 
website in the checkout journey with that probability score that can enable the merchant to provide different payment methods. We are so confident about our AA model that we even pay the cost of shipping the goods back if we were wrong. For example, if we thought that the package would not be returned by the customer, but the customer chose to return it anyways, we take care of the shipping cost. That's how much confident we are with our AI models. With these two capabilities, we also added an experimentation platform that enables merchants to deploy, choose different models and different customer experience in the checkout so that they can trade off between revenue and RTO. Because if you are reducing a lot more offers from going through the checkout journey, then you are potentially having lower revenue. But that is a decision that a business owner can take. So we give all that capability to the business owner so that they can reduce the RTO. I've talked about availability, I've talked about security, I've talked about reliability, all with high scalability. All of these things are possible only when the cost is kept at check. Let me talk about how we run our infrastructure very efficiently. The last two years, we have seen incredible growth in the total payment volume that went through our platform. We grew by 70% in terms of the total payment that we processed, but our cost reduced by 60%. This is quite unique. How did we do that? First, we started with giving the control and visibility of the cost to engineers who are developing services. We gave access to the cloud console to the developer so that the developer can know the cost of the services that they are developing. We also took a lot of goals to granularly tag each service by developed by each developer so that they can be very aware of the cost of the goods. And we took goals to reduce the cost so that we can run our infrastructure very efficiently. Second, we also inspected every service that we developed and we run, the services that we run ourselves. We found that many of our self-managed services are not cost efficient. So we chose to migrate these services to managed services, which have equivalent capability, but run in a very cost efficient manner. And we automated across the stack relentlessly. For example, we all know that running a service in spot instances is much cost efficient than running in on demand. But you also know that spot instances may not be available, in which case we run our service in on-demand instances, but then the moment spot instances are available, we switch to spot instances. This type of automation does not exist in a cloud provider, so we had to implement. We have automated quite a bit across our stack to achieve cost reduction. Let me talk briefly about what is next for Razorpay. We aspire to continue to be the most loved and trusted fintech. We started with global expansion last year. We launched our payment gateway solution in Malaysia, and we are looking to expand more in Southeast Asia and other regions over time. We are also sp spending time looking at new regulations that have come up. For example, the Data Privacy Act in India, which is very granular, and we are looking at implementing that in, in the next few months. We're also carefully inspecting whether our current architecture can take us to the next level. We are thinking of adopting cellular architecture, which reduces the blast radius, which allows freedom for engineers to develop features in an agile manner, deploy faster, and expand to various geographical locations much faster and innovate more. It is still day one for us. Thank you for the opportunity.